Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about the cell membrane, also known as the plasma membrane, which is a fundamental component of all living cells. It is a dynamic and complex structure that separates the interior of the cell from the external environment. It helps maintain cellular integrity and mediates various physiological processes. Let's delve into some of the function. The cell membrane performs several critical functions essential for cellular survival and homeostasis. This includes having a selective permeability. The membrane regulates the entry and exit of substances, allowing essential molecules like nutrients and ions to enter while preventing the loss of vital components and protecting the cell from harmful substances. The cell membrane also helps with cell communication and signaling. The membrane proteins act as receptors for signaling molecules such as hormones and neurotransmitters, enabling the cell to respond to external stimuli and also communicate with other cells. Number three, the cell membrane also helps with structural support and cell shape. The membrane maintains the cell shape and provides attachment sites for what's called the cytoskeleton. Now the cytoskeleton helps in maintaining structural integrity and also within the cell, it actually helps facilitate with movement within the cell, such as substances. Finally, the cell membrane is important for cell adhesion and interaction. The membrane's proteins and glycocalyx mediate cell to cell and cell to matrix interactions, which are crucial for tissue formation and immune responses. Now let's talk a bit about history of the cell membrane. Now the study of the cell membrane, or the plasma membrane, which is the outer part of the cell, has evolved significantly over the past century. Early observation in the 19th century using light microscopy hinted at the existence of a boundary surrounding cells. The development of electron microscopy in the 20th century allowed scientists to observe the membrane's fine structure in greater detail. The fluid mosaic model proposed by Singer and Nicholson in 1972 revolutionized our understanding by describing the cell membrane as a fluid, dynamic, bilayer composed of lipids and proteins. Since then, advances in molecular biology and biophysics have further elucidated the membrane's complex architecture and function. So let's talk about the structure and composition of the cell membrane. The cell membrane is primarily composed of a lipid bilayer interspersed with proteins, carbohydrates, and cholesterol, each contributing to its unique properties. So the cell membrane is a lipid bilayer composed predominantly of phospholipids. Phospholipids are the most abundant lipids in the membrane. Each phospholipid molecule has a hydrophilic, which is a water-attracting head, and two hydrophobic water-repelling tails. This amphiphatic nature drives the formation of a bilayer, with the hydrophobic tail facing inward and hydrophilic heads facing the aqueous environment inside and outside the cell. Within the lipid bilayer, you also have cholesterol. This molecule is interspersed within the phospholipid bilayer contributing to membrane fluidity and stability by preventing the fatty acid chains of the phospholipids from packaging too closely together. Within the cell membrane, you also find proteins, which can be divided into integral proteins and peripheral proteins. Integral proteins are your intrinsic proteins. Embedded within the lipid bilayer, these proteins often span the entire membrane. This is called transmembrane proteins. These transmembrane proteins are involved in various functions such as transportation of ions or molecules, signaling such as receptors, and cell adhesion. The peripheral or the extrinsic proteins attach to the surface of the membrane either on the cytoplasmic or extracellular side. These proteins play roles in signaling and maintaining the cell shape. Finally, you can find carbohydrates on the cell membrane. These include glycoproteins and glycolipids. 
which are carbohydrate chains covalently attached to proteins and lipids, respectively. And they form the glycocalyx on the cell surface. And this layer is involved in cell recognition, protection, and interaction with the environment. It actually interacts with the connective tissue, like the collagen that you find outside the cell. You can't talk about the cell membrane without talking about transportation of things in and out of the cell. The cell membrane is involved in several transport mechanisms, categorized into passive and active transport. Talking about passive transport first, which essentially means transportation that requires no energy. It just happens. Passive transport includes simple diffusion. Diffusion is essentially where you have movement of a molecule from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. Molecules tend to spread out. So simple diffusion is where you have movement of small nonpolar molecules such as oxygen and carbon dioxide moving across the membrane down their concentration gradient. Within passive transport, you have facilitated diffusion, which again requires no energy, but it requires a transport or a channel such as your integral proteins. Facilitated diffusion allows transportation of larger or polar molecules through the membrane protein channels or carriers down their concentration gradient. Next, you have active transport. Now, in active transport, you need energy. A as in ATP. A for active, A for ATP. Active transport can be divided into primary and secondary. Primary active transport is where you have direct use of ATP to transport molecules against their concentration gradient via pump proteins, such as the sodium potassium pump. Secondary active transport utilizes the energy stored in the electrochemical gradient created by primary active transport to move other substances against their concentration gradient. A good example of this is what's called a sodium glucose co-transporter. So as a sodium moves across the membrane, it also carries glucose with it. Aside from passive and active transport, you also have another type of transport called the vesicular transport, which includes endocytosis and exocytosis. Endocytosis is essentially the process by which cells engulf external substances within vesicles formed from the plasma membrane. This includes phagocytosis, ingestion of large particles, pinocytosis, ingestion of fluids and dissolved substances, and receptor-mediated endocytosis, where you have specific uptake of molecules via receptors. Exocytosis, on the other hand, is a process of vesicles fusing within the plasma membrane to release their contents outside the cell, used for secretion of hormones, for example, neurotransmitters and waste products. Now that we know the structure and the components of the cell membrane, as well as how transportation works across the cell membrane, Let's learn about the types of cell membrane. While the term cell membrane typically refers to the plasma membrane, the actual outer part of the cell, cells also have internal membranes that compartmentalize the cell into various organelles. So the plasma membrane, by definition, is the outer membrane enclosing the cell, regulating interactions with the external environment. Then you have organelle membranes, including the nuclear envelope, a double membrane surrounding the nucleus containing nuclear pores for the exchange of materials between the nucleus and cytoplasm. You have the endoplasmic reticulum membrane, a network of membranes involved in protein and lipid synthesis, the Golgi apparatus membrane, membranes forming the system that modify, sort, and package proteins and lipids. You have the mitochondrial membrane, the double membrane with an outer and highly folded inner membrane housing the machinery for ATP production, the power station or the power horse of the cell. Then you have the lysosomal membrane and the peroxisomal membrane, which essentially are vesicles containing breakdown products or enzymes.
So in summary, the phospholipid bilayer membrane is the fundamental structure of cellular membranes composed of two layers of phospholipids with hydrophilic heads facing out and the hydrophobic tails facing in. And this arrangement creates a selective barrier that regulates the passage of substances in and out of the cell. And the movement of substances is through transportation, which can be either passive without energy or active requiring energy. Thank you for watching.